Hey, DPC Nation. This is Dr. Vance Lassie, the undisputed king of medicine and president of Direct Primary Care Alliance. I'm honored to be back on the phenomenon that is Dr. Conception's podcast, My DPC Story. Marielle has asked me to update the DPC community with trending issues important to all of us striving to build a better American healthcare system, placing patient care and common sense above profits. Please join us this week as Marielle and I discuss these important issues. Number one, forgive and forget. It's high time that DPC docs start taking insurance again. Number two, we were blown away this week with the breaking news from the scientific community, long appointment times and their shocking causal relationship to high mortality rates. Let's do what's right. Cut down on appointment times and duration and see more patients. Trust the science. Number three, the unstoppable future of DPC's collaboration with Medicare and Medicaid. Let's make it happen, people. Number four, legions of middlemen stand ready to profit, promising DPC to millions of employees. Of course, the workforce doesn't exist yet, but here's why we support them anyway. Number five, peas in a pod, the amazing future of big pharma and DPC. And last but not least, this week's editorial, stop texting and emailing your patients. Some barriers aren't meant to be broken down. If he gets out of rehab, Doug Frego will join us as we tackle these hard-hitting issues and so much more this week when you join the rebellion with us right here on My DPC Story. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Lassie. Well, let's get to it. As you mentioned before we started this interview, we definitely need to stop texting and emailing patients. It just has to go. It makes no sense whatsoever. And the more patients per hour thing, I am so on board with that. It's not even funny. So as we go down this road of maximizing profits over patients, you know, I'm just, I'm super excited for this interview. Well, happy April Fools, everyone. What's not a joke though, is my DPC story just hit over 100,000 downloads on Apple Podcasts and we couldn't have done it without our amazing listeners. So to thank you and to celebrate this milestone, we are giving away an incredible DPC Summit prize package. This prize includes my DPC story swag up to $50. And on top of that, the prize also includes a ticket to the DPC Summit, which you will hear about in a few minutes. To be eligible for the giveaway, all you have to do is rate and review our podcast and Apple Podcasts. Second, take a screenshot of your review and email it to support at mydpcstory.com. Lastly, be sure to follow My DPC Story on all social media platforms, including Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter. All the social links are at the bottom of mydpcstory.com and in our show notes. For bonus points, share both this episode and the My DPC Story post about the DPC Summit with your community on socials. The winner will be announced in a future episode, so make sure you tune in to find out if you've won. If you've already purchased your ticket and you're the winner, My DPC Story will send you a check for the price of your ticket. Thanks for listening to My DPC Story and good luck. Now, sit back, relax, or plow some snow as Dr. Jeff Davenport and I talk about the upcoming DPC Summit. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of My DPC Story. And today I am super excited because it's summit season. And today with me on the podcast, we have Dr. Jeff Davenport. He is practicing out of One Focus Medical, a DPC in Edmond, Oklahoma. And together we are going to be chatting all about the DPC Summit coming up in Minneapolis, Minnesota this June. So Dr. Davenport, thank you so much for joining us today. It's awesome to be here. My first time on My DPC Story. And and I'm just pumped up and excited to be here. As I'm sure our audience is as well. I, I can feel some people just like getting their distractions out of the way so they can pay full attention to what you're going to share. So I want to start off with making sure that we thank our co-sponsors for the DPC Summit before we get into the details. So the American Academy of Family Practice, the DPC Alliance, the Family Medicine Education Consortium, and the American College of Osteopathic Family Physicians. We are so grateful because this this conference, this summit is so meaningful to so many physicians. So with that big thank you, I want to get started. For those who are not aware of what the DPC Summit is, can you share with the audience what is DPC Summit? Well, actually, you know, I completely forgot to tell you about this while we were talking a few minutes ago, but we're going to be celebrating the 10 year anniversary this year. So whatever year that was, 20, 2012, I think approximately. And so our member groups, AFP, FMEC, ACOFP, DPCA, 
We've all come together with representatives from basically each of the groups to put a committee together. And we're putting on a conference to educate people about direct primary care. If you have no clue what direct primary care is, the, the two sentence explanation is it's a membership style medical practice where we don't mess with insurance and we just take good care of patients. And it's a model that continues to grow in numbers across the country. I started my practice about 2014. There was maybe 400 docs around the country doing it. And now there's several thousand. And every year there's two or three major conferences and the DPC summit, in my opinion, of course, I'm biased admittedly, but, but, you know, we're, we're the tip of the spear in educating people about direct primary care. And What's awesome about this particular conference is not only are we educating new physicians and new doctors and new providers and, and new people about what direct primary care is, we actually, just like we did last year, we're actually going to have more advanced training as well for people who are not brand new to the DPC model. We've got what I call a 201 track. We got 101 for the for the new folks and 201 for the people with some experience and practice has been open for a few years. And on top of that, we've got a 301 track, which is legit medical education. The whole conference is, is CME, continuing medical education for any people who need it. But especially the 301 track is legitimately, how do I do these foot procedures? How do I take care of heart failure? How do I do iron deficiency anemia in a DPC model. And so even for the people who have been practicing DPC for years, we're legitimately going to be doing medical education, which a lot of us doctors are kind of get nerdy about, you know, how do I treat this problem? How do I treat that problem? And, it, and it's just going to be fantastic. And then on top of that, we have multiple workshops. As a matter of fact, we have an entire day with two separate rooms devoted to workshops that are once again kind of medically driven. How do you, you know, how do you use ultrasound? How do you do certain injections? We have several different workshops and we'll talk about the agenda here in just a second. And it's an entire day. Like previously, this was a three-day conference. We've kicked it up a notch now to a four-day conference. So, you know, we're just going to keep spreading the direct primary care. I call it the gospel, right? It's the good news. We're spreading the good news. I love it. So let's keep spreading that gospel. When you mentioned that it's for people who are interested in DPC, I want to get into that nitty gritty there, because when you say people who are interested in DPC, what does that mean? Does it mean that you have to be a physician already? Does that mean you can be a physician in training? Who is the DPC summit for, given what you've shared as a preview already? Well, it's actually very cool because the majority of attendees are going to be actual family physicians. Obviously, there's some internal medicine docs out there. There's some pediatricians. We have classes specifically for the pediatrics people as well. As, as direct care in and of itself uh, spreads throughout the country, direct primary care covers not just the family docs. I mean, I'm a family doc, but we've got a lot of other colleagues who are in other specialties and they want to practice in this model as well. So the majority of people coming are going to be physicians, but I especially want to make sure that everyone understands it's not just attending physicians. We want residents to be there. We want medical students who aren't even physicians to be there. There are actually some scholarship opportunities to apply for. But then it's not even just those of us in medical training. Certainly some of our colleagues in medical care can come, whether it's you know, advanced registered nurse practitioners, you know, physician's assistants. There's, there's other people who help take care of patients who we would want to come as well and learn about this model. On top of that, it's not even about the people, quote unquote, doing the medical care, taking care of patients. Every year we have staff members, we have office staff, we have office managers, there's hospital personnel who show up to try to learn about this model. Even today, I just talked with a hospital here in Oklahoma who's wanting to start a DPC employment program. And, and, and they're like, when's this conference? And, you know, I, I think there's got to be half a dozen of them who are going to be there. And so it's not just for docs and it's not just for family docs. It's for anyone who wants to learn about direct primary care. I also think although I don't know that there will be a lot of people like this. I also think business owners or members of, of employer groups who want to understand what the model is about, recognizing it, once again, in my opinion, and I'm biased, but recognizing that direct primary care is essentially what I think is the wave of the future. It continues to grow. We have hundreds of attendees every year. 
more and more doctors doing this model. And so employer groups, it, small and large, they want to help take care of their employees and their people. And so some of them will be there as some of our vendors and sponsors who, who, are, who have booths and things of that nature. And some of them will be attendees just to learn to understand exactly what we're trying to do to take care of Americans and American physicians and providers better than what we've had for the last few decades. I'm really glad that you put in those details as to who is this conference for, because recently I attended the Pediatric GPC Mastermind and some of them had no idea that DPC Summit existed. I mean, they had, some of them had recently learned about the Pediatric DPC Mastermind. But when the people I was speaking with asked specifically, oh, is it just for family doctors because it's co-hosted by the AAFP? I said, right. I'm so glad that you asked that question. And so when it comes to involving and inviting everyone who is interested in direct primary care. I always say you never know who you're going to meet. And so every single time I have shown up at a conference about DPC, there is somebody I never expected to meet or talk to or engage with or network or, you know, become best friends with afterwards. But it's because we, just like you and I were talking about before we started this recording, we all have the shared desire to have better health care, better quality health care, better access to health care, fill in all the blanks to better blank health care that we are all fighting for and achieving through the direct primary care model. So if that appeals to you, come on and join us. So with Absolutely. that, yes, with that, can you give us the dates and where is it going to be held? Okay. Well, if you haven't heard as of yet, it's going to be Minneapolis, Minnesota this year. Super excited about that. I've not been to Minneapolis before. It's going to be Father's Day weekend in June. So we're excited about that. I know that there's some people out there who, who might be slightly frustrated with that date, but we think it'll be a great getaway for families. I, I, I'm a dad. My wife goes with me to every conference because this really is, you know, a family movement because the whole point is, is taking good care of the patients, taking good care of the, of the physician themselves, that allows them to be healthier, to take better care of patients. But then on top of that, they can take care, better care of their family as well. As a matter of fact, for three straight years, I've been a part of a talk that, that deals specifically with that. You know, this is a family decision to start this style of practice. But so Father's Day weekend, and that is the, the workshop day, once again, fourth day, the day before the, the kind of the traditional conference starts is going to be Thursday, June 15th. So if you want to go to one of the workshops, sign up, get there on, on Wednesday before that, go to the workshops on Thursday, and then start the main conference on Friday the 16th, and then all day Saturday the 17th, and then a half a day on Sunday, the that would be the 18th, which is Father's Day. And then one of the fun things that we're going to do on Sunday Father's Day is we don't have like a specific plan, like everyone has to do this, but we've got what we're calling a Sunday fun day, Father's Day fun day, basically. And we're going to encourage most everybody to head over to Mall of America. There's all kinds of family friendly, family fun things to do there. And it's you're just going to be walking around and there's going to be dozens of people that you have met in the last three days, you'll get to meet spouses and kids. And it'll be just a great camaraderie and time to spend with each other. And then on top of that, the Mall of America is evidently awesome. Once again, I, I've not been there, so I can't wait to I can't wait to go. But that's that's the dates, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. We're going to party like it's 1999, basically. I'm so excited that it's been expanded to four days because truly at every single DPC summit, it's been, wait, wait a minute, there's, there's no more days what we have to go home now. So I, I am <laughs> so excited go back to the real world <laughs> yeah. as, as much as we love our practices, it is still a, 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 a huge injection of inspiration, of camaraderie, of just feeling like you belong and just this insane Kool-Aid that everyone is drinking when it comes to the happiness that DPC brings because of the autonomy, because of the quality of care that we're able to give our patients. Again, there's so many fill in the blanks there. So when we're talking about the dates, when we're talking about Minneapolis, where are people going to stay for the DPC Summit? The Hyatt Regency Minneapolis is where most of us are going to be staying. We have, you know, a whole a whole block of rooms um, 
that are at a special price arranged by our, you know, our sponsors, AFP, ACOP, et cetera, et cetera, DPCA. And, and so we're all going to be in the same hotel as well. So you, you can bet your bottom dollar that even after, you know, the classes are done and we're going to have some happy hours and we're going to have some times where we're just all hanging out together. The, the DPCA will have a big party on Saturday night, which I hope everyone gets to go to. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a second, but, but there's going to be a lot of interaction with each other just because we're in the same space, even, you know, off time when, when we're not actually in classes. So Hyatt Regency, Minneapolis. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I absolutely second, you know, staying where the conference is. I used to find the cheapest possible place that I could find to save money. But what I have found is that the after conference time, whether it's at attending a happy hour or going to Denny's until one o'clock in the morning, and you know out there who you are, because I've done that with, (laughs) with some of my best friends in this movement, and that's where your brain continues to think and dream about DPC and how your practice can be when you are fully present in it. So I definitely encourage people to register and yeah. also book their hotels because last year, as we saw, you know, the the hotel block at the Sheraton got booked. And so people yeah. had to go to another hotel that was uh, still within walking distance. And it is Minneapolis after all, fine. But if you can, I would jump on, even as you're listening to this podcast, if you're on your cell phone and not driving, get onto the registration block for the hotel. So when it comes to the details, let's jump into the 15th. What is happening specifically on the 15th? You mentioned a little bit about what that it's a full day of workshops, but what are those workshops and who are those workshops for? These, these workshops are specifically designed essentially as advanced 201 or 301 content where you're literally learning how to do some things in medicine that maybe you didn't train doing in your residency, or maybe you did train, but it's just been forever since you've done any of it. And, you know, now that you have a DPC practice, you want to expand your skill set. You want to provide more services to your patients. You want to be able to do things that provide value and, and help your help your patients be healthier. And so the workshops on Thursday, June 15th, starting right off the bat, 8 a.m., we've got two four-hour workshops. One is intro to POCUS, which is point of care ultrasound. So basically you're going to learn how to use your little handheld ultrasound device to help take care of your patients, whether you're just looking for stones real quick or whether you're trying to see out is see is that in duration or is it fluctuance? Are is there a a foreign object there? Or do I want to use this ultrasound to make sure I know where I'm putting this this needle into a specific joint or a specific area? There's all kinds of things that you can do with ultrasound. And I'm I'm not even going to lie. I don't know what they are because I haven't taken this workshop yet. (laughs) So I'm excited to get the opportunity to take this workshop. Although I don't think I had room to put it in, but the POCUS workshop filled up just almost immediately last year. As a matter of fact, it was so popular, we're doing it twice. We're doing it 8 to 12 in the morning and then firing it up again, 1.30 to quitting time in the evening. So that workshop is going to be twice, both in the morning and the afternoon. Second workshop, intro to OMT for MDs and then in parentheses and DOs. So this is the osteopathic things that those DOs do, the cracking and popping and adjusting and and the soft tissue manipulation and all of the things that they do. I'm, I'm an MD. I have no idea about any of that stuff, but I do know that there are many, many, many physicians who have incorporated the OMT into their practices, sometimes as just something that they do, sometimes as an expanded therapy that they ap- actually generate some extra income on. It just depends on who you are and how do you want to you know, design your practice. But this is going to be intro to OMT for basically anyone who is interested in learning how to do it or brushing up on some of their skills. And once again, this was fantastically popular last year. So since it was so popular, we're doing it twice. So that is going to be room two. And we're going to do that back to back four hours in the morning and then a lunch break. And then we'll do it again in the afternoon, four hours in the afternoon. And if any of you know, some of the docs on this group, Dr. Jack Forbush out of Maine, you know, he knows what he's doing and he's got two or three other docs. 
with him, Dr. Slattengren, Dr. Wagner, Dr. Wild, and the o- the ACOFP really kind of came through strong for us with these workshops. They're the ones who really kind of designed them and put them together. And so we're just loaded with a, a bunch of great faculty in all of these workshops. Now, one of the workshops that I think is going to be fantastic that almost every single physician should think about We're going to have a two-hour workshop about wound care. How many of us have patients with a diabetic foot wound or just an abscess that's not healing, that that open and drain, but it's not healing correctly, or venous stasis ulcers? These types of things are are somewhat of a cakewalk for me because I actually spent five years in a wound care clinic, and yet there's so many family doctors out there who, who don't feel comfortable with it, and yet what a value add when you can take care of some of these chronic problems of your patients inside your own practice without having to send them to a wound care clinic. And especially if they don't have insurance, you're talking thousands of dollars if they go repetitively week after week after week to a wound care clinic. So we have the wound care workshop as well. Um, And once again, we're going to repeat that one in the afternoon, but that one's only two hours, which opens up a second slot in the morning and the afternoon in that same room for another workshop and it's it's joint injections. Anybody who wants to do steroids or prolotherapy or PRP injections, the platelet-rich plasma injections, we're gonna have two two-hour classes, one in the morning, one in the afternoon to really help educate people on, on how to do those types of injections. And anyone who didn't learn some of those things in training, these are some of the easiest things to do if you just get the training. And you can make a huge difference in your patients' lives and save them a lot of money from having to go to ortho or whomever else they might go to by you being able to do these things in your office. I love it. I'm super excited. I'm already signed up for both wound care as well as joint injections. As soon as registration dropped, I'm like, I'm not missing this chance. So please, if you are interested, go and register. I, I will say that you know when it comes to what Dr. Davenport shared, we are painting everything under the the banner of DPC. And so when you think about, oh, I've taken a joint injection workshop, that's great. But this is how do you do it under DPC? How do you think differently because you are a DPC physician, because you are in a DPC clinic working with patients who are paying under the DPC model? So you know, it's, it's, if you are interested in, could I include this in my practice, whether it be a a total separate option for your patients or whether it's included in your membership, come to these workshops to see if you really want to learn more afterwards and then really get heavily into POCUS afterwards or joint injections, whatever it is. But even if you're not sure, these, these workshops can be beneficial to you. And especially if you are already in the DPC mindset, Dr. Lassie and Dr. Thompson have have spoken many a time on expanding your scope of practice. And that is one of the things that I continue to love about DPC, as I'm sure you do. And what residents and medical students, their eyes like drop because they're like, wait a minute, you get to do all the things, all the things, and you can do all the things because if you are a DPC physician, you can decide what you bring to your clinic. So, you know, if that speaks to you, again, register, register, register. So now going on to the 16th. Okay. So after we all get there on Wednesday or Thursday, get to know each other on Thursday night, we're going to hit hit it off quickly in the morning. There will be breakfast every morning from seven to eight, but then firing it up at eight o'clock in the morning, we're basically going to have one of our main stage speakers. It'll be a combined everybody in the same room thing. You know, we're talking three, four, 500 people, depending on how many people are there. And we're going to have Dr. Andrew Anderson. He's got a great story. Uh, He was broken, just non-empathetic, fatigued, burned out, stuck in the system physician. And I don't know if he was legitimately suicidal at the time. He'll tell us in the talk, but, but regardless of what severity of depression and just, just life sucking despair he was at, that's where he was. He's going to tell us that story and he's going to talk about how we can help save ourselves and help save each other with this model. And by being healthier ourselves, that's how we save our patients and and do a better job for them. We've always been trained to take care of the patient, but he's going to tell us how DPC helped him take care of himself. And I'm excited about that main stage talk. 
And then at nine o'clock after, after we get kicked off by uh, Dr. Anderson, we're going to split out into the three tracks, you know, the 101 track, 201 track and, and 301 track. So I'll tell you the morning time and the 101 track. So at 9 a.m., we got a Dr. Aaron Weaver. He's going to have a talk called DPC Saved Me and My Career. What is direct primary care? So we'll get a little bit of Dr. Weaver's background and his story as well. But the majority of the talk is legitimately just what is DPC? Because there's going to be a bunch of people in the room who may have heard a little bit about it, enough to get to the conference, et cetera. But he's literally going to lay out, well, this is what direct primary care is essentially. Now, we all know the old saying, if you've seen one DPC, you've seen one DPC. So we all have a slightly different model, but he's going to educate us what kind of ties us all together and what makes DPC DPC. And then we're going to have a break, 15 minute break. Uh, at 10.15, Dr. Blackwell has a talk called Taking the Leap Logistics of, of Leaving the System. And her talk is basically going to be about, well, how do you notify your, your employers? How do you cancel insurance contracts? How do you do these types of things to completely essentially separate yourself from what you have been doing to create the pathway forward without a lot of anchors holding you back? so that you can move forward into a DPC practice. And then we're gonna end the morning with Dr. Tiffany Leonard, who is a solo practitioner and also a member of the DPCA board. She's actually our executive director. She's just so passionate about it that we, we've hired her for that position and the DPCA actually pays her for that position. And she has been on the DPC Summit Planning Committee. So just an invaluable, member of the DPC Summit team. And her talk is called Starting a Practice, The Easy Button. So she's going to try to answer all those questions of those of us physicians who never really had any business training and legitimately just start at the very beginning. How do you form a business? How do you get you know a license? How do you get a tax ID number? How how do you look for real estate? How do you maybe hire someone? How, you know, what EMR do you use? I, you know, it's just essentially an hour of pure business type stuff that will hopefully help some of the new people in the room who are thinking about doing a DPC practice not be scared off about the daunting task of starting a new business because that can absolutely be very scary for people who know how to take care of hypertension but don't know how to run a payroll. And so that's what that talk is going to be about. So let's go ahead and talk about the 201 classes in the morning time. So once again, this is more for docs who have been in DPC for at least a little while, year two, three, four, whatever. And, but they're, they're dealing with some of the growing pains of having a maturing DPC practice. And so Dr. Christina Gonzalez is going to have the nine o'clock slot. And it's called, What If I'm Not a Cowboy? So we've used this term before, you know, uh, Dr. Vance Lassie and Nick Thompson are, are classic, you know, have classically referred to themselves as cowboys because they're in different places in Kansas and they literally just have to do almost specialist level things, whether it be OB stuff or surgery stuff or, you know, putting people back together after big injuries, you know, being kicked in the arm by a horse or, or, or dropping a chainsaw on a foot, all kinds of crazy things that I feel like I'm a little bit crazy sometimes, but I'm nowhere near as crazy as those guys. And so Dr. Gonzalez is going to say, well, what if you're not that person who really wants to do all these crazy procedures and take care of some really amped up stuff? And she's going to bring basically value added options if you're not heavily procedural. And that's what the talk is about. Uh, essentially, there's some people who don't mind blood and guts and, and they love doing those things, but she wants to come back from that part of things and explain some other options for people who don't want to do all those procedures that will still expand and benefit their DPC patients. And then we have a break. And then the second talk in the morning is called Advanced Clinical Procedures, Practical Ways to Expand Your Skill Set. And that's going to be basically the opposite of the first one. It's going to be, uh, how do you do some of these other things in, in your practice that are a little bit outside the box, kind of outside your traditional family medicine experience. Dr. Amber Beckenauer, Neil Douglas, and Rob Rosborough are gonna be doing that talk. They each have 
special parts of their practices that are not just your regular meat and potatoes, family medicine, and they're going to try to provide some some good content for the 201 crowd to really see if there's anything they're interested in adding to their practice. All right, let's talk about 301. And, and once again, here is the legitimate, you know, you're a doctor, you're a nerd, or at least I am. You want to learn something today? All right, here's, we're going to teach you something and we're going to lead it off with Dr. Amy Capoccia. I think that's how you say, say Dr. Amy's name. And I'm excited about her talk because she's going to have a, a podiatric care for primary care talk. She's going to teach you how to do bunions and corns and plantar fasciitis and ingrown toenails and all the podiatric stuff that a lot of family doctors will refer their patients to the podiatrist for. But we can do these things if we want to, if we choose to. There may be someone out there who's like, ooh, toes, gross. I don't want to do that. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But there's a bunch of us who just don't have the training and we can take care of feet and save our patients a lot of money and headache and be able to provide those services for them. Then we'll have a break. And then the next two talks on the 301 track, we had wound, we had two big wound care workshops. Well, we're also going to have a wound care lecture. Dr. Eric Rudnick, I believe if I remember correctly, he is actually a wound care physician. He's the husband of one of our family medicine doctors. If I remember correctly, please don't quote me on that, but he is going to give an expert wound care talk and it's called wound care. Why? I won't the wound heal, what to do about it, and when to refer. And then we're going to finish off the morning with Dr. Samul Modi, conquer migraine in your clinic. So there you go. You got a migraine headache talk. We know that's a common problem. It's going to be great to learn more about migraine so that we can handle it. I commend you guys for putting together such an incredible lineup because there literally is something for everyone. Let's hit the afternoon, afternoon. of the 16th. Okay. All right. So continuing on with Friday afternoon, June 16th, back to the 101 track, we got DPC nomics. This is affectionately referred to as Vance nomics because the DPCA president, Dr. Vance Lassie, he's out in Holton, Kansas, and he's been a leader in this movement for many years. But if you know Vance, he is cheap. Holy cow, he's cheap. You will not squeeze a, a dime out of that guy if you need one. Now he'll give you the shirt off his back but he's not going to give you a dollar out of his pocket. I promise you that. And so he is going to help educate the people wanting to start a DPC practice on how to buy things, get things, find supplies, find equipment, find hospital beds, you know, find all the types of things that you need to start a DPC practice. And he's going to educate you on how to do those things and save a ton of money because it does not take $100,000 to open a practice and so DPC nomics, because in DPC overhead is everything. And that's going to be followed up with cash flowing your startup DPC with moonlighting. Dr. Gonzalez, again, after her morning lecture, it, what if I'm not a cowboy in the 201 track? She's coming back in the afternoon after hopefully a restful lunchtime. Cash flowing your startup DPC with moonlighting. Once again, this is going to be educating people on, okay, well, how do you generate income while you're starting a new business? Because I don't care what new businesses you start, whether it's a restaurant or whether you're selling widgets or whether you're a physician starting a new practice, there ain't no money at first. And so you got to figure out a way how to feed your family, pay the bills at home that you have while your practice is, is struggling to get going. And, and I emphasize the word struggling because not very often is this just magic and fairies and pixie dust. And so it is hard work. And she's going to talk to us about what moonlighting options and what ideas on generating income there are out there to help people start their practices. In the 201 track, back to the DPC docs who have been in it for a while, we've got Dr. Purcell and Dr. Hemkes, Nicole Hemkes. They're going to tag team on that. And it's called Fine, Sign and Retain Employers You Want. And so this is going to be a talk specifically geared towards working with employers in DPC. There's tons and tons of businesses out there trying to find a health care option, a health plan, whatever you want to call it. And so many of them are recognizing the value of DPC, and they're going to teach us how to find those employers and interact with them and how to manage them and, and uh, take care of those employees as patients. Similarly, the next talk is working with an employee benefits advisor. This talk is Christy Gupton, as well as Liz Fisher. Liz is Dr. Ben Fisher's wife. She's the office manager of their practice, I think North Carolina. And then Dr. Patrick Phil now, uh, who's a, a, an MD, 
And those three are going to talk to us about employee benefits advisors and how they can, how to find the right benefits advisors that understand DPC and really understand the movement and want to take care of the employee slash patient and not just are worried about their bottom line. So finding those benefits advisors and how to work with them and how to educate them on what DPC is and expand your practice by bringing on employers and employer groups. In the 301 track, once again, strictly medical education, we've got dementia. Don't forget your advanced directive, making the most out of POLST. And those are acronyms, M-O-L-S-T and P-O-L-S-T. I'm not even going to lie. I don't know what those acronyms mean, but that's Dr. Phil Eskew. He's a DO, but he is a physician and lawyer. And he's going to talk to us about dementia and the medical aspect of things. And then also talk to us about some of the legal aspects of that disease process. And then in the 301 track, finishing off the day, one of the previous DPCA presidents and always a great leader in the movement, Dr. Ryan Newhoffel out of Lawrence, Kansas. He's got physical fitness, foundations, measuring, and counseling. So he's going to educate us all how to incorporate some of the fancy and fun things that he's doing in Lawrence with respect to physical fitness and helping patients literally reverse some of their chronic disease processes and even better prevent them from occurring in the first place. So he's got to talk there. And then after that, we're going to have a break. And then in the four o'clock hour, we're all going to come back together again for a main stage talk. And this is going to be Dr. Rob Rosborough out of Oregon again, and his office manager, Janet Daffin. I don't know, Janet, if I said that correctly. I apologize, young lady. But Janet is his rock star office manager type person. And they're going to come together and their talk is called Managing the Flow, Tools to Effectively Manage a DPC Practice. And we, we're bringing everybody together here because we really think they have some stuff to share, not with just the newbies and the people who are thinking about starting a practice, but also those of us who are in a practice and we have workflows of our own, but maybe we can be more efficient. And so it'll be a main stage talk with those two. And then at five o'clock, it's happy hour time. We got a DPC happy hour. There'll be some vendors in the room. There'll be some hors d'oeuvres and things of this nature. Everyone will probably get a drink ticket or two, and it'll just be a time of camaraderie and getting to know each other and without any specific real agenda. But that'll be a great time until about 6.30. After that, I want to mention that one of the things we did this year, which we're so super excited about, I wish I could claim this as my idea. I can't remember who came up with it, but we're going to have a mentor program. This mentor program will actually go before the, the conference even starts, but then we always felt like some of the, the new people in the room at 6.30, like you said a few minutes ago, it's like, awesome, we're done with the day, but what's everyone going to do? And, and you know, they're, they don't know anybody yet, and, and so they don't know where everyone's going. And, you know, the 10 of us who are good buddies, we're already planning on going here, and there's 20 people going there. And, and those of us who know each other, we make plans and kind of have an idea of what to do. But but the, one of the things the mentors are going to do on Friday night specifically is, is we're going to have a planned uh, dinner for, we're going to put one or two mentors at each of these different restaurants and different locations, and they will take their mentees there. Their mentees will already be assigned to them prior to the conference. And so they'll be able to, the, the, the mentees will be able to show up, have dinner, meet each other, and have one or two people, voices of experience as their mentors and it'll be a little bit more organized chaos than generally in the past. And so that is an awesome program. The mentor program will have little, little things throughout the whole conference. And then also, once again, prior to the conference itself. So when you're signing up, if you want a mentor, please make sure and check that box. And then if you want to be a mentor, if you are a voice of experience, someone who's been doing it for a little while, you can sign up and check that box as well. We're excited about the mentor program. Before we go to day two, one other real quick thing, you know, one of the goals of this DPC summit committee was to try and develop some new blood. I'll use myself as an example. And actually I have actually fielded a few phone calls after we put the agenda out and after we notified people, whether we chose their talk or didn't choose their talk, there's, there, there are some veterans out there who have talked at literally five, six DPC summits in a row who, who's their talk didn't get chosen by the way, to choose the talks, we blinded them. We, we didn't know who was giving the talk. We just put the, the, the applications and the different talk options in front of the committee. 
And we were like, which ones do we want? And so, and then later on, we put names in. And so anyone who wasn't chosen or anyone who was chosen, they weren't chosen based on their name or their past experience. And I'll use myself as the example here. Anytime one of our veterans contacts me and says, how come I wasn't chosen? Well, guess what? I wasn't chosen either. Jeff Davenport put in three proposals. They all got shot down. I feel full of bullet holes right now. My heart is aching. I want to be on stage. I want the spotlight. But hey, you know, they just didn't cut the mustard. They're not going to throw me up there just because they know my name. So I'm the chairman of the committee. If I didn't get chosen, there's no harm in that. There's no foul. There's nothing negative to anyone who get cho- didn't get chosen. But we specifically wanted some new blood and some new people up there. So, of course, we're going to have some oldies but goodies. Dr. Kissy and, and Rob Rosborough and Vance and Dr. Ryan Newhow. I mean, yes, we have some of those people who have, who have been up there many times, but we have a lot of new blood, too. And that in, 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 itself, in itself is very exciting because you can't just keep showing up on stage just because you've done it in the past. You've got to bring good content and you've got to put in your applications and make them better to compete with all the people who are wanting to share their wisdom. But this is a good thing, not a bad thing. So even for myself, none of my talks got chosen. But if you look at the agenda, who are you going to take out and put me in for? I mean, even I could admit that I'm looking at, well, maybe Vance, because he's a chump, but you know, but other than, I mean, who are we going to kick out to put me in? And that's the hard part is just like, there's so many good topics and so many good speakers. And like you say, you know, it's a good thing that not only are there more people applying than there are spots to speak, but also that the number of people attending this conference continues to grow and grow and the number of DPC practices opening after DPC Summit goes crazy. So, and I I will put a note in here that, you know, Dr. Doug Ferrego, an awesome pioneer in this movement, has dpcnews.com and he highlights new practices opening all the time. So watch that website blow up after DPC Summit. And then also I wanted to make a comment about the mentor and mentee program. I am such a huge fan of that just because like you said, you know, you might go to this conference because you yourself are interested in DPC, but you don't know anybody else who's in attendance. And we've talked about here, we all have the experience of what is American healthcare and how can it be better? Or what are the problems that we have as physicians working in the system? What are the problems we have as patients in the system? And working from that shared experience of exposure to American healthcare and how broken it is apart from DPC. That's, I'm definitely biased when I say that. It's it's almost like you guys are creating a microcosm of what this community is. We are so supportive of each other. And then to top that off, you have a mentor who's assigned to specific mentees. I just, I love that because it really, it, it allows someone to break the ice already just by saying like, this is your group. You belong in general, but especially you belong here. So love that. Yeah. So let's get into the 17th. What's going to happen on Saturday. Okay. So Saturday morning, of course, we lead off with breakfast around 7 a.m. We're, we're going to, I don't know how organized this will be. It might be just better to have it organic, but we believe that we're going to have certain pockets of expertise, if you want to call it, whether it's minorities in DPC or a special populations like rural or urban or an employed DPC physician versus a solo DPC physician. I mean, there's some DPC docs, like I mentioned Dr. Tiffany earlier, like she doesn't even have any staff. She, it's just one person in a practice taking care of a very small patient panel. I, I feel like that would drive me crazy, but that's what she does. And so at breakfast time, I think some of it may be organic. We might try to help facilitate some of it, but there may be little pockets of expertise where people who are coming to the summit might be able to find someone who has some of the same similar interests or, or want to design their practice the same way. But, but, but that'll be breakfast time. Then we'll hit it off at 8 a.m. with a main stage group again. It'll be a panel. There's this character, Dr. Marielle Concepcion. Maybe you've heard of her. She, you, of course, will be the moderator of that panel. Good luck with that. A couple of the people on the panel, I'm telling you, you better crack the whip. But the panel will be Liz Fisher, who we've already mentioned. She has an MBA, runs Dr. Ben Fisher's clinic. They are spouses. And then Christina Gonzalez, Rob Rosborough, and Clota Ryan out of just near Chicago and Illinois, that will be the panel. And the panel is called Setting Boundaries, Honoring Yourself. 
And that's a main stage group with everybody in the room because we feel like there's some information and concepts and ideas that, that this group will bring that will help even those of us who are well experienced. And then at nine o'clock, we'll split out into our different groups. In the one-on-one -on -one group, uh, Dr. Phil Eskew, we mentioned our doctor lawyer specialist here. He has the legal and regulatory issue spotting talk, basically just notifying all of the new DPC interested parties that are in the room about some of the legal issues with doing a DPC, depending on the state and, and, and those types of things. At the same time, in the 201 class, we've got a whole panel, hiring partners, a panel discussion. I think it's Dr. Tiffany Leonard, who is the moderator of that panel. And it's Nicole Hemkes, Vance Lassie, and Shane Purcell, who are the actual panelists. But at any rate, that's hiring partners because so many of the 201 group are at that point where their individual panels are getting full and they're trying to figure out, well, how am I going to expand this business? Should I expand the business? Who should I hire? How do I fire, find who to hire? And so that's going to be a great talk. And then in the 301 level at nine o'clock, Dr. Phil Hellman is doing intro to lipidology, something that every single one of us needs to do better at because every single patient in our practices is going to have lipid problems. That's the nature of being humans. And he's going to teach us about those things and how we can improve our care of those people. Then there will be a break and continuing on, we're going to have a combined 101, 201 class. The 301s will still have a separate medical education talk, but the, the combined 101, 201 stuff is going to be Dr. Tammy Waters. She did this talk last year, the HIPAA, OSHA, CLIA, what you need to know talk. I, I, I just want to claw my eyes out every time I think of these entities. And yet they are entities we have to deal with. We have to figure out what rules we have to follow and, and how best to follow them. And Dr. Tammy did this talk last year and it was hugely successful. And so we we're doing it again for all of the ones and twos. And then that will be followed once again by a combined one and two class, which is optimizing technology in your DPC. And so this one will be Tiffany Leonard, Kenneth Q and Jaron Blake. Uh, once again, different people who know technology better than me, but might be able to teach me something so that I can take care of my patients better. And let's admit it, there's there's some physicians out there who are technolo technology deficient, not in a bad way. It's just, you know, that's not their thing. And yet in DPC, it's one of the most important value adds that we can have, you know, texting and FaceTiming and interacting with people and trying to make our computer systems facilitate taking care of patients in a better fashion than they get in the system. So that's going to be a great talk, I think. Back over in the 301 at the 1015 slot. We've got lifestyle medicine and direct primary care, a case study by uh, Dr. Natalie Genti. And then that's followed up with DPC gynecology at your cervix is the name of the talk. That's Dr. Esther Katibi. I hope I'm saying Dr. Esther's name correctly, but she's going to teach us basically benign gynecology. I, I don't know how much she'll get into any malignant stuff, but certainly, you know, being able to take care. Now, now I, I have patients, you know, for whatever reason, I'm a, I'm a male physician or, or they just have a preference. I have many of my patients who go to a gynecologist for their, for their paps and pelvics. But of course, I have some of those skill sets. And if there's any doctors or providers in the room that don't feel as comfortable about taking care of the benign gynecology, I think this is a huge, huge thing that pretty much every primary care provider should have the skill set to do. And if you don't, it's probably a value add that you could easily add. And if you choose not to, I think you'll lose some patience potentially over it. So I think that's a fantastic 301 talk. Then we have lunch. And then we're in our full split out one, two, and three groups. In the afternoon for the, the 101s, we've got preach what you practice, how to create engaging social media that brings in new patients in just 10 minutes per day. Now that's Dr. Phil Boucher, I think is how you say his name. Dr. Phil is going to educate the 101s and maybe even some of us 201s and 301s who want to go over into that class and learn something on how to really reach out into the po our, our, you know, our, our community population and attract the people into the practice who we want to attract. And that's followed with getting started with medication dispensing and, and direct primary care. This is Dr. Brian Lanier. Most DPC doctors in most states in the country are allowed by their state license to dispense medicines out of the office. This is a huge value add 
for many DPC practices for their patients. And so Dr. Lanier is going to educate the 101 crowd on how to set up a dispensary and what printers and those types of things to get and, and how to dispense and, and do all of those things to create that value for the new DPC practices. In the, the 201 at 130, being a managed services organization to support regional growth of direct primary care. Uh, this talk, I mean, I don't even know. I mean, don't even ask me what a managed services organization is. I mean, yeah, I could probably give you a basic explanation, but I think this is going to be a really cool talk for those 201 people who are trying to figure out you know, how do I expand this business? I'm going to hire some people. I learned that in a class an hour or two ago. And how can creating a managed services organization help me with that? That's Dr. Natalie Gentile and Kirsten Lynn. And then at 2.30, it's wholesale medications without the pesky in-house dispensing, how to partner with your local pharmacist. Now, this is Dr. Luke Van Kirk. He's in Springfield, Missouri. And Dr. Vance Lassie, again, this is kind of the, the partner or the point counterpoint to the 101 talk. The 101 talk is about how to dispense meds out of your office. This 201 talk is how to incorporate your local pharmacist and actually have them do all of this dispensing for you and how you arrange those things between the two businesses and how best to take care of your patients, how it is a value add to some DPC practices, because doing the dispensing takes a lot of time. And they're going to tell us some of the arrangements that they've made with their local pharmacists to offload their own practices from, from doing the dispensing themselves. And yet still keeping the direct primary care mindset of excellent service, and an extremely fair price to save their patients money and give value to the DPC practice. And then in the 301, we've got giving iron, taking blood, in-office procedures for hematology. I'm so pumped about this one because I've seen like four iron deficiency anemias just this month, and I'm sending one to go get iron infusions at my local hematologist. And I cannot wait to take Dr. Laura Brasino Kenny's, hopefully I'm not butchering her name, but she is an actual hematologist who is practicing in direct primary care. By the way, she's also one of the founding members of the DSCA, which is the Direct Specialty Care Alliance. Yes, we talked earlier about doctors and other specialties, whether internal medicine or other things, nephrology, pulmonology, rheumatology. There's a lot of primary care in, in those specialties. And the DSCA is a, a growing entity. And so she's a hematologist who does primary care as well. And she's going to come in and teach all of us slow-witted family doctors and others how to manage all of these hematology things that we may not think we can do, but we absolutely can. And she's going to teach us that. And then the last talk on, in, in the 301 is commonly managed orthopedic fractures, musculoskeletal injuries, and DPC. And this is Dr. Rob Rosborough. Again, he's in Oregon, really not that far outside of Portland, but it's a little bit of a farming community. And he just has farmers show up in his office with just parts of their anatomy, just torn up and broken and shattered and messed up. And so he, he does so many injury type things, managing these types of things. And he's going to give us a great talk and educate us on how to manage some of these things so that even those of us in a 100,000 person town can provide some value to our DPC patients by, by providing care for some of these types of injuries. And lastly, to end the day, we're going to all come back together again for a main stage talk because we all know that mental health is such an important aspect of primary care and a very underserved aspect of medical care in this country. And so Clota Ryan is going to give everybody at the conference, all three levels, a talk. It's called The Mental Health Crisis, Improve Your, Psychi Your Psychiatry Skills in Direct Primary Care. I just think this is so needed and such a value add and such a skill set that some of us, myself included, are not good at. And Dr. Clota is just a special, special person. I think she's going to just be dynamite in this talk. And it's such, a, it's such a necessary thing for all of us to get better at our psychiatric skill set. And that's the end of day two. And don't forget, at the end of day two, party time. The DPCA, I can't honestly remember the name of the, 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 the restaurant, but the Direct Primary Care Alliance will be hosting a party. 
Now you have to go to the DPCA website. You can't sign up for the DPCA party through the DPC summit registration. You have to go to the DPC Alliance, which is dpcalliance.org. You have to go there to register for the party. I think there was a scholarship for like the first couple of a hundred or maybe 250 people who sign up. So if you're listening to this podcast, pull your car over right now or get on and register. You don't want to show up at the conference and then have to pay to go to the party. You want to be some of us who are not going to pay. I mean, free is good, right? That's what I'm talking about. And the party is going to be at, at a restaurant. I forgot the name. I apologize, but it's going to be a rooftop party. That's basically what I'm calling it. I don't know if it has an official name, but it's going to be rooftop party. And assuming that we have good weather, we're, there's going to be 250, 300 of us. I don't remember the exact number of people we can take. That's why it's important to sign up now. And if it rains on us or if the weather gets bad, we have a backup plan of, a, of an indoor space at the same restaurant. And the restaurant is basically five to 10 minutes walking distance from the Hyatt. Dr. Tiffany was up there scouting some places and she walked that that path in the freezing cold in Minneapolis in January. So it's just not very far. And I think anybody who wants to come to the party will have a great time, another time of fellowship and camaraderie. So don't miss it. Super excited. I'm glad you mentioned that because the, for the people who are signing up also, you can, at least for the, the first 200 where there was scholarships to go, you could bring two guests. And so I, I assumed that yeah. my, that two girlfriends in particular were going. So I signed them up and I, I probably should tell them that they don't need to worry about their tickets, <laughs> yeah. but definitely get those tickets while they're hot. So what is going to bring us home on the 18th? Okay. We're going to close it out with a bang here. Obviously breakfast in the morning. Once again, in the one-on-one, we got three, we got three talks and then we close it out with a main stage talk. So in the one-on-one, We've got a speaker town hall starting a practice. That's going to be several of the speakers from the previous talks on the previous days are going to get together. I know that I'm the moderator for one of these town halls on Sunday. I can't even remember which one, but, but, and it's basically going to, to a certain extent, be a free for all, just random questions from the audience. We don't really want to take up a lot of time with the speakers spending a lot of time using themselves because you already know them. You've seen them from previous days, but it'll just be kind of, whatever the audience wants to talk about. And I think that's a fantastic option for, you know, for newbies who, you know, after two days of content, they're just going to have 500 questions, you know? Um, and then at 9.15, it'll be uh, strategies for success in DPC, overcoming challenges to grow your DPC. And this is Dr. Nicole Hemkes again. I, I don't know Dr. Nicole, but her story, evidently, she's just been just kicking tail. I can't even remember what state she's from, but I feel like it's in the Midwest somewhere, but whatever it is, she, she started a DPC practice. If I remember the story correctly in a town where two or three other DPCs had failed and she was told a DPC wouldn't work and she's opening multiple clinics and hiring other doctors. She's just dominating. So she's got that one-on-one talk on, on overcoming challenges to grow. Um, Third talk in the morning is facing fears of starting a DPC practice. This is Dr. Katie Liu. Once again, there's a lot of doctors in the room who know how to take care of kidney problems and urinary tract infections and treat back pain. But starting a business, dealing with some of the logistics of these things can be scary. And so Dr. Liu is going to, is going to talk about some of those things. Her practice is there a micro practice or a solo practice where it's just kind of like her. And, you know, she had to overcome some, you know, some of her own challenges and create some courage and learn some things and, and, do, and, and get out there and fight through some of those fears. And she's going to share some of those skill sets and some of the things that she learned in her practice with the 101 crowd. Going back to the 201 crowd, same thing at, at eight o'clock. We got a speaker town hall with the previous 201 speakers, three or four of them. And it's going to be a free for all just bring whatever questions you want, and they're going to be able to answer them. At the 915 talk, we're going to get Dr. Clota Ryan again. Doc, I need you now. How to identify and manage personality disorders in the DPC model. So she's going to be talking about some of the legitimate patients who have some underlying psychiatric issues, personality disorders, or personality traits, or, or even just needy patients, how to manage some of those things and identify the, the actual diagnoses and how to help those patients besides learning how to 
manage them to keep yourself sane as the physician trying to take care of that patient. And finish off the morning in that thread, ongoing DPC financial planning, budgeting and investing for sustained success. This is Nick Shiver, who is, I believe, a financial planner type of a gentleman. And he is going to be on the stage with Dr. Melissa Boyland. And they're going to be helping some of us 201s look at some of the financial aspects of, you know, our practices and, you know, how to make streamline them and make them really strong financially for the long haul, as well as I believe there's going to be a little bit of some talking about, you know, financial planning for your own personal financial future and those types of things. And then in the 301, we have kind of a break, I believe, currently still at the eight o'clock hour. And then at the 915, we've got evidence-based alternative medicine techniques. This is Dr. Ryan Brang, Dr. Katie Brang, and this is going to be basically off the beaten path, alternative medicine, but evidence and still evidence-based stuff. It's still a CME class. You're going to get credit for learning new stuff. And it's just going to be, you know, a little bit different than your traditional give them a pill and move on down the road. I think that'll be very exciting. And lastly, in a 301 track, your patients in the wilderness. This is Dr. Jack Forbush out of Maine again, Dr. Tiffany as well. These two characters, if you don't know these two doctors, they do a lot of hiking and traveling and, and Dr. Jack, you know, goes to, I can't even remember what Central American co country he goes to all the time. He's fluent in Spanish. He'll be down there for a month at a time. And, and just, dealing, you know, doing, he does missions and things like that in those places and just dealing with people in places where you don't have an ER right next door and how to manage them, stabilize them and get them back to more advanced care, at least here in the States, you know, that would be the goal. And so I think that'll be super cool, especially if you live in anywhere where, where patients might get banged up out in the wilderness. And then we're going to close it off with a main stage talk with Dr. Neil Douglas. And, you know, he's, he's stealing a line from one of our favorite people. The name of his talk is find your why many of you have heard that phrase before I have to, you know, I, I, I want you all to know that I personally, along with Dr. Rob Rosborough reached out to Neil Douglas. If you don't know Neil, he's just a special human being. He's the father of, I don't know, 19, 20 children. I don't remember. I, I just, I think it's four. Nope. I just lied. I think he just had another one. I think it's five. And he has a practice that he runs out of the basement of his house. And so he's got wife and all kinds of kids upstairs from, I think there's five of them and they're all like under seven or eight at this point. So he's just, he's a father and he loves his patients. And he has essentially a little bit of a micro practice and he runs it out of his home in his basement. And, and what an incredible you know, testament to just being a family doctor, just being a family doctor. The people show up at your house and, you know, sometimes the kids will run through the waiting room, you know, and it's just he's got such a great story and he's such a sweet spirit and a gentle soul. And yet what a great sense of humor and wit. And he's going to close us out and bring us home with find your why and give us the win one for the Gipper speech. And we're all going to leave the conference with just a desire to go dominate the world. And I cannot wait for his talk. He's, he's, he's going to, he's going to be awesome. And so, and, and that'll, that'll close the official schedule. And I hope everyone heads over to mall of America and parties like rock stars with us, bring your kids, bring your spouses. And uh, we'll, we'll just take over the Mall of America. There won't be any room for anyone else in the in the state to visit that day. Again, I cannot commend you guys enough for putting together such a well-rounded lineup of speakers and topics and a way to include everybody in this conference. So if you cannot attend in person, what are the options for people to still partake in the DPC Summit? Yeah, so there will be a virtual option that would be less expensive than attending in person. I, I, there's, there's nothing wrong with the virtual option. You'll still get incredible uh, CME content. You'll get incredible education. But I want to encourage you, if you're asking the question, should I save money and do the virtual option or should I go? Like it, the only people who should do the virtual option are people who just legitimately cannot attend in person. We've talked about this several times. Besides sitting in a room on your butt for so many hours in a row, which is slightly annoying, 
We all know that conferences can be tedious and long. I think that this, the speakers will, will keep you on your toes and, it, and you won't have that as much at this conference as at most other conferences, but it's the camaraderie and meeting people and interaction with people outside of the classes that is every bit as valuable as the classes themselves. And I would tend to say even more valuable. And so when a person is thinking, should I, should I save money and not go? I'm telling you, in my opinion, you're actually losing money with that decision. If you decide not to come, you should come, you should show up, you should meet people, you should learn all the names and numbers and get cards. And because that is extremely valuable, it's way more valuable than the few hundred bucks you're going to say by not getting a hotel room or not, or not buying a plane ticket. So please come if you can, but there will be a virtual option. It's so great that there is a virtual option, but I cannot second that enough. The way that you engage with people who are in the DPC ecosystem is so much different when you're in person and you you literally cannot help but meet at least one other person who is who is in a very similar situation to yourself. So whether that's thinking about DPC after residency, whether that's opening DPC while in residency, whether that's no. opening five years out of practice, there will be someone there who has lived through or who is living through or who is about to live through your shoes. Go in person if you can. The other thing I wanted to highlight is like Dr. Davenport was saying, get ready to network. And getting ready to network really does entail planning for showing up in person and being ready to you know, share your information, gather information. So things you can do, I've mentioned this before in previous recordings, but you know, go to, go to Vistaprint, go to Canva, wherever you go to get your business cards or, yeah. you know, the, there's apps like Hi Hello when you, where you can get a QR code or a business card that's digital. There are ways to prepare for networking where you can easily trade information with another person. And the other thing is after the conference, what I do recommend is have some kind of system in place, like an email template or something, so that you just plug those names in and you start sending out emails to the people you want to follow up on. Because as those connections are made at these summits, that's what's going to keep you plugged in going into the future. And you can create your little group of, of friends that really are your support system going into becoming a business owner under the DPC model. But I cannot second that enough. Being there in person allows you to do that where virtual does not. Yeah, absolutely. What is the cost to attend the DPC Summit? If you are a member of one of our host organizations, the AAFP, the ACOFP, the DPC Alliance or FMEC, the price to attend is 450 bucks. However, it's 450 bucks right now. We call it early bird registration. So please register now on May the 16th. After that, it's no longer early bird registration and it jumps up 150 bucks. That's a 33% increase. So don't mess around, get your plane tickets now, get your room now register now and save yourself some cash. If you are not a member in any of those organizations, it's basically $100 more, so 550 bucks. And then after May 16th, it's $700. They have a couple of special fees here, like a one-day access fee. I, I don't really know why anyone, I mean, I guess maybe if you have a conflict, you could only do one day, but I don't know why anyone would voluntarily do a one-day fee. The resident registration fee is $250. The medical student registration fee is $150. So we try to make it more affordable for the younger people who are still in training. We never really talked about the prices of the workshops, but the, the four-hour workshops, the POCUS and the OMT, those are $150 each. And the, the, the two-hour workshops, the wound care and the joint injection workshops are $75 each. So you can sign up for those. Also, when you're registering, there's a box to click if you want to be a mentor. There's a box to click if you want to be a mentee. There's a box to click if you want to make a $50 donation to the scholarship fund. Now, one problem with the scholarship fund, which I clicked it, I'm donating 50 bucks to the scholarship fund, but you have to recognize that that money will, won't be available until next year's DPC summit, which is good. Donate to that. We need, we need scholarship money for next year as well. However, 
if you want to help fund a scholarship for this year's DPC Summit, I want you to either contact me directly, because at, at this point, we, we are kind of past the point where we can jump through all the legal hoops and make all the money look pretty. And so we basically are collecting names and accepting donations for specific students. So you can contact me. My email is DRD, that's short for Dr. D, DRD at onefocusmedical.com. It's the word one focusmedical.com. So DRD at onefocusmedical.com. You could also contact the DPC Alliance. Um, hello at dpcalliance.org. So if you want to help sponsor a student, especially if you know a particular person that you want to sponsor, feel free to contact myself or the DPC Alliance. We're going to figure out a way to make that happen because we want as many students there as we can. So don't mess around, get your registration done. You don't want to pay 150 bucks extra just because you procrastinated. And one more note about sponsoring someone to go, like Dr. Clodagh Ryan's bringing Paula, her office manager and her right-hand person yeah. to the DPC summit. So if there's somebody who is like, you know, your best friend from medical school or, you know, your office manager or the nurse who's going to be opening as your clinical lead, think about sponsoring individual people in your community or reaching out to a medical school or a residency. And if there's interest in direct primary care, see if there's interest in sponsoring a scholarship just between you and that local organization. So definitely ways to support getting people to the DPC summit. So definitely think about it because May 16th is coming, but it's not here yet. Yeah. One real quick point of information. Some people will ask me, what does my office manager cost? Or what does my non-physician person that I'm bringing cost? If they want to actually attend the conference, it'll be the non-member fee because I mean, they're not a physician, so they can't be AFP, they can't be ACOFP. And so the people that you're bringing with you who are non-physicians will be the non-member fee, which is the 550. Essentially, everyone is the same cost for attendance. And so where do people go to register if they haven't figured out that already? Yeah, sorry. I, I Maybe I didn't say that. It's dpcsummit.org. And uh, if you want to get more specific, dpcsummit.org slash register. But once you get to that website, you've got the hotel and transportation, you've got mentorship. If you're an exhibitor and you want to be an exhibitor for the conference, there's a, a button for that. And then there's a scholarship button. Anyway, you can look at the agenda again if you'd rather see it rather than listen to, to me just ramble on about it for a whole hour. dpcsummit.org. Perfect. It's also going to be linked in the show notes and you can also find it on the resources page at mydpcstory.com. So if you have any questions, again, Dr. Davenport's mentioned how to reach out, but go to dpcsummit.org as your main page of contact for the summit. If you have any issues with registration, if you have questions about the summit in general, there is a, a link to contact. That email is going to be pc at aafp.org where you will be able to put general questions in if you're not sure where to go and they can help direct you to the right people as well. So again, June 15th through 18th, four amazing days of celebrating 10 years of the DPC Summit in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So come join in the fun and we will see you there. Thanks guys. Can't wait to see you there. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Next, look forward to hearing from Dr. Esther Katibi of New Life Direct Primary Care in Corpus Christi, Texas. If you've enjoyed the podcast and you haven't yet done so, subscribe today and share the episode with a physician you may know who needs to hear about DPC. Leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify now as well, as it helps others to find all these DPC stories. Lastly, be sure to follow us on social media. If you're wanting to continue learning more about DPC in the meantime, check out dpcnews.com. Until next week, this is Marielle Conception. Hey.